Webinar 7, Uterine LMS. So I did a special section for uterine LMS and for other LMS that's from gynecological areas because there are special issues and some extra treatment options available. Number one, morselation, and that's when your tumor has been cut up by a knife or a power morselator. The issue of hormone receptors on some of our tumors. We're actually a little bit more chemo responsive. And the issue is, should you see a gynecologist or should you see a sarcoma specialist? For most of us with uterine LMS, it was a surprise. We thought we had a fibroid, which is benign. And we find out instead it's a tumor. Fibroids or leiomyomas grow with estrogen. Fib is it a fibroid that's gone rogue and become cancerous? or is it an independent tumor that grew? Either way, it's a mutation in the smooth muscle lining of the uterus. So surgery usually has been a myomectomy where they took out the tumor itself, or an open abdominal, abdominal hysterectomy. Some women had laparoscopic morselation, and some women have been, their tumor has been morselated by knife. So what is morselation? Power morselation is a medical device used in hysterectomies. The morselator shreds the uterus inside the body, then sucks out chunks of it. It's become the main way hysterectomies are performed in the U.S. However, if there's cancer, it spits microscopic cancer cells all over that abdominal cavity, putting women at the same risk of dying as a stage 4 patient. The first time I heard about power morselation was in 2012 from Sarah Robinson. Sarah, a physician assistant herself, had asked her surgeon to have an open abdominal hysterectomy. Her doctors told her she didn't qualify for that and morselated her uterus instead. The pathology came back, uterine leiomyosarcoma. Outraged, Sarah told her story to local newspapers spoke up about it at the CTOS conference in front of hundreds of sarcoma pr practitioners and researchers. She warned women on the Dr. Oz show. She wrote an article. She contacted all other women she could find who had uterine LMS that was morselated. Then in 2013, Dr. Amy Reed became one of the victims of uterine morselation when she had LMS. Sarah, Amy, and her husband, Dr. North Pullman Norchasm led an aggressive campaign to have morselation banned. In 2014, Amy and Hooman successfully got the FDA to hold a hearing on the morselator. Amy and Hooman's family, Sarah, LMSDR, and many LMS victims of morselation testified. The LMS community of patients and loved ones sent over 100 letters to the FDA protesting morselation. The impact has been huge. The FDA found that the risk of spreading undetected sarcoma during a hysterectomy is about 1 in 350 women, not 1 in 10,000 women, as gynecologists formally asserted. The FDA has issued their strictest warning, a black box warning, on every morselator. The FDA restricted the use of morselators to only low-risk cases and mandated it not be used for older women and women with symptoms of cancer. Johnson & Johnson voluntarily recalled their morselator off the market. Many health insurers have stopped paying for it. Some hospitals have abandoned and restricted its use and made informed consent a requirement. The Government Accountability Office investigated why it took 20 years for the FDA to warn of the risk. Thanks to Amy and Human, their story and the issues of the morselation has now been published in the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Boston Globe, The Cancer Letter, and many other sources. Lyomyosarcoma, for once, got attention from gynecologists and the researchers. And most important, because of the campaign, there have been women who unknowingly had LMS who refused to be morselated. But uterine morselation by power morselation 
and by hand still continues to be performed on women who have unknown uterine cancer. The fight to educate and convince gynecologists to stop morselating continues now by individual lawsuits. So it's up to the courts to impact a change. If you have LMS and had your tumor morselated, please contact us. So the other special issue for uterine LMS is that some of the tumors have hormone receptors on them. It's estimated 40 to 80 percent have them. Estrogen attaches to the receptor and tells the cancer to grow. So here is a cancer cell in the yellow and blue, and the hormone fits in like a puzzle piece or a key in a lock and turns on that cancer cell's growth. So how do you know if your tumor had estrogen or progesterone receptors? Ask your doctor to order the testing. The test is very simple, done in the path lab of your hospital. They take one of your paraffin blocks and make a slide. Then they stain the slide for estrogen or progesterone, and they actually just look at it under a microscope and estimate how much of that slide took up the dye. So if you do have estrogen or progesterone receptors on your tumor, you want to start blocking that estrogen. If you're premenopausal, the way to do that is have surgery to remove your ovaries or take Zolodex or Lupron. And in some cases, you don't have to do anything because chemotherapy has already uh, stopped the ovaries from functioning. If you're postmenopausal, then you want to take an aromatase inhibitor. There are three main kinds on the market, Aromidex, Femara, and Aromatsin. Please do not take tamoxifen. It's associated with actually giving leiomyosarcoma. After menopause, your fat, muscle, and adrenal glands actually makes androgens, which convert into aromatase, which convert into estrogen. So aromatase inhibitors stop that process. Some women get side effects from aromatase inhibitors. They might get joint pain, sometimes this is just short term, bone loss, definitely, and hot flashes. So discuss these with your doctor. You want to have a bone density scan called a DEXA every two years, and we recommend you take the supplements, vitamin D3, calcium, and citrate. You need to do weight-bearing exercises to build up your bones, which is yoga, weights, and walking, for example. So if you ask your doctor to do the test for receptors and they refuse, give them the following information. Tell them to look up the NCCN guidelines for uterine neoplasms, version 2016. They can look at page 33 under uterine sarcoma, systemic therapy, and hormone therapy. And right there it recommends aromatase inhibitors for estrogen and progesterone positive uterine LMS. The following are a few more research articles that your doctor can read. In summary, the optimal surgery for fibroids or uterine LMS is a total open abdominal surgery. Morselation of the tumor by knife or morselator puts you at the same risk of spread as being stage four. The campaign to ban morselators started in 2013 by physician assistant Sarah Robinson and doctors Norchasm and Reed. It has resulted in an FDA black box warning and reduction of morselation, although it still is being abused despite the warnings. If your tumor was morselated, get advice from an attorney. Many 
uterine LMS and gynecological tumors have hormone receptors. Have your tumor tested for hormone receptors. If positive, then you want to stop that estrogen from stimulating your cancer cells from growing. If premenopausal, consider surgery or chemical suppression of estrogen. If postmenopausal, consider taking a aromatase inhibitor. Discuss all side effects with your doctor. There is now empirical evidence that the use of estrogen blockers for uterine LMS that is positive for hormone receptors, so share that with your doctor. The NCCN guidelines now recommend aromatase inhibitors for gynecological LMS that is estrogen and progesterone positive.